Aloha. My name is Elaine Gallant, and I am your host of Books, 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 a live streaming series to Think Tech Hawaii on Oahu. This is a show where you might talk about reading books, writing books, and anything in between. Today's guest is Paul Devlin Wood. He's a long favored Maui son, a writer, an author, journalist, an instructor of imaginative advanced, uh, imaginative writing at the University of Hawaii Maui College. He's an advanced teaching artist with the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and Arts. He's also a novelist, co-novelist, and writing coach. His work has garnered many awards, including the Elliot Cades Award for Literature by the Hawaii Literary Arts Council. Please, let's welcome Paul Devlin Wood. How are you, Paul? Hey. Oh, there I am. Great. <laughs> and, and I... <laughs> I'm so happy. Well, I, I just can't, didn't recognize myself from that glorious <laughs> introduction. I, oh. Being a writer is, uh, hmm. well, I won't deny I have <laughs> those things. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, I have to tell you, we've never met in person and um, no. only recently just corresponded due to this show. But I've been a secret fan of yours for over 25 years. What do you think of that? I, I hope I have more secret fans out there. <laughs> uh, I hope they become less secret. Less become, secret. No, that's really nice. Yeah. You, you send your words out there and have very little understanding of what happens to them afterwards. Yes. I'm not, well, I'm not a particularly good marketer. I think I'm a good writer, but good. Yeah, well, you are a good writer, trust me. And I first, I first noticed your writing in the Maui News. So, but I have to ask you, since it was brought up in our pre-show correspondence and it became the title of a show, you're a writer in Hawaii. Yeah. Are you nuts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't mean anything disrespectful about Hawaii. I'm a writer in Hawaii because I live here, but also because it's a fascinating place to write about. And uh, to do that, I had to give up being any in the where in the proximity of Manhattan or wherever other people are doing things, and that. Uh, and not to put myself in any kind of special position, but there, there aren't that many people writing in the state that I know of. I mean, there are people I, I and friends and, and people whose work I respect, but it, there's a whole lot to say that hasn't been said. And uh, we're shrouded in the influence of the visitor industry, which has its own way of writing about where we are. And it struck me early on in my youth that um, there's something going on here that the visitor industry, it doesn't expand to include, you know? Yes. Um, so I found my way of being a writer in Hawaii and it's been really diverse and um, kind of risky. In yes, other words, I no that because your writing is diverse. I want to talk about that. Um, I see you as a satirist or even a humorist, but you've written some very um, uh, oof, oof, uh, serious uh, or co-authored and coached some very serious books as well. So yeah. that's quite a range for a writer. Um, so how, what do you call, how, how do you describe your writing as you know yourself as a writer? Are you a satirist? Oh, well, I like to make people laugh. I think that's um, it's a tricky thing to even endeavor to do, uh, but there's not enough of it going on in the world. I mean, um, not laugh maliciously at no. dumb people who are not like us, but the laugh itself and and the the day to day. I somebody once called me. It was really out of the blue. I was at a restaurant and somebody introduced me and someone I I never saw again said, oh, yes, you're the Paul Wood, you're, you're the chronicler of the minutia. <laughs> and I, I thought, well, that's cool. But in other words, I, I find delight in looking at very, very close up at small things. Yes, I, I find you writing that way, too. I really do. I, I think you have a uh, you have a you know what they have those gels on cameras that change the color of things. When you look at life, you have one of those gel sleeves over and yeah. it, it just puts a funny new twist on it 
But before we get into the fun stuff, let's talk about the book that really floored yeah. me that you co-authored, and that is Laura Gancho. If we can see the cover of that, that novel, you co-authored this with Ed Padilla. Now, yeah. right. this is a really serious um, uh, novel. And you coached one, another one by Gail Treadwell titled Holy Hell, A Memoir of Faith, Devotion, and Pure, Ma uh, Pure Madness. Do you want to talk about either of those two? Because I, could, I cannot get Laura Gancho out of my head. I, I really can't. Sure. I read it like twice. Yeah. And if I go on too long, just signal me. I but will stop you. Laura Gancho is a prison escape story. And it's a, it's, it's a true story, a true account. And I want to say something about that in a minute. But uh, I met Ed Padillo um, at a friend's house. He um, he had he and two of his friends had been arrested in Peru in the seventies, and were uh, not sentenced at all, just thrown into the world's worst prison, Lurigancho, outside on the outskirts of uh, Lima, Peru, and uh, and they had been smuggling. Uh, uh, cocaine and had been, he had been doing it repeatedly. He had an interesting background, uh, a, a kid from Southern California who was half Mexican who couldn't get hired for that reason at Disneyland. He had mountain pies too, didn't he? Uh, he, he? He grew up in the Long Beach area and uh, what I'm getting at is he became a founding member of a group called the Brotherhood of Eternal Love, which was a uh, a hippie group that was excelled at smuggling um, marijuana and and especially LSD. They got into promoting LSD and um, it became quite a, a, an international uh, agency. But all a lot most of those people in the Brotherhood came to Maui around 1970. Uh, there was less surveillance there and they were sort of kicking back and they surfed. And so Ed was on Maui. But that, um, and then it was during that interval in the 70s that he uh, started smuggling cocaine, which was, he realized yeah. afterwards was a terrible thing to do. Yeah, ended up in that, in the world's worst prison and ended up escaping. So a little bit on holy hell, because that's another one. Uh, you did not co-author that one, but you helped Gail um, Treadwell. I think it Treadwell, did we say? Yes, uh, Treadwell. Yeah, Gail Treadwell, yeah. Uh, coach, uh, you coached her on this book because it was a very difficult subject for her to, I mean, she was literally uh, enslaved. Well, that, uh, uh, yeah, in a way, psychologically, yes. let's put it that way. She became a devotee of an internationally famous uh, Hindu saint. Uh, the Hugging Saint, Ama, who a lot of people will recognize that name. And uh, when Ama was just starting, Gail, who is an Australian woman, was in India and became enthralled with her presence and her, you know, whatever that she stood for, and became her personal assistant. And the, the relationship became um, abusive after a while. And so she knew things about Ama and her private life that were a burden for her. And Amma became quite vindictive. It was just a, that's why it was called holy hell. It became a holy hell for her. And she ended up fleeing. She was under such severe surveillance that she had to, to hide in the backseat of a car at night and be driven away. And uh, yeah, she, she came to Maui as a refuge. And because I have a reputation, people find me. You know, who, who can help me write? Right, as a, in this case, as a form of uh, self-curing, really. Yes. Uh, yes. And, uh, and she didn't know how to do it, and I just sat down with her. And I talked to her last week after we talked about uh, doing this show. Yes. And oh. uh, uh, she's in good shape. She's moving, for the, because the economy has shifted, she's moving to New Zealand. Oh, I wish uh, But she that. feels like the whole project. The, she, was, she just told the story of her season uh, over many years with Ama, and she did not tell it in a vindictive way. She yeah. told it honestly, and she still feels lo very loving toward Ama, but she felt that she had to get out of there and had to 
purge this. Yeah, she had to save herself. And, you know, when I read it, I thought, oh, my goodness, how often does this go on in, the, in, in all kinds of organizations, right? I mean, uh, uh, but this one, it was, it was a moving story, and, and I really wish yeah. her well. So yeah. um, what She's did you- five, five criminal charges against her in India. Really? By the way. Uh, Gail does or Amma? Gail does, yes. Oh, All okay. sorts of obscure Hindu laws were, have been levied against her, you know? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible that these same things happen in life, but we're so fortunate that people can write about them as, as especially in the way that they have been written, because we can, we can follow it, we can understand it, we can appreciate um, their, their survivorship you know, that they've experienced. And both of these novels yep. Yep. Are, are about surviving, about survival. So um, how many books have you written of, of yourself? I mean, I, I mean, I know, but why don't you tell us about them? Well, I have two books in print that are available through, I mean, I self-publish them uh, uh, through Amazon. And these are collections of columns I've done. I've done a lot of short pieces. Uh, and um, Upstart, scallywag uh, give away for free kind of tabloid fold newspapers uh i started doing that in uh, er the early 90s when a somebody i knew who was a stained glass artist started a uh, um a tabloid fold newspaper called the haleakala times it was paid for by advertising was passed uh, out and sent out in the mail to people for and I suddenly I had a, a I started to help him get it organized and then he gave me page two to do anything I want with it so I called the column four wheels five corners which is a direct reference to where I was living at that time around Makawao Haiku upcountry Maui uh, and there's an intersection called five corners and it's a it's a truck kind of neighborhood as most of Maui is actually but <laughs> which you have another fan in that very area and her name is Suze, uh let's see hold on let's see susan armstrong and she says do you have a favorite essay from your four wheels five corners column and would you like well, to read a little i did i brought something thank you Yay. and I'll, I'll take a bit out of it it's just um the, the, the whole business of writing a column for one's community taught me really how to be a writer i was always a writer since i was a kid but it wasn't until I got to that point where I knew who my audience was. Right. When, I went, when I went to pump gas in Makawao, the woman behind the window is collecting my money. I just thought, that's my reader there. And it, ma it made me realize that I was communicating with people. <laughs> and then I, I was able to write about whatever was up. And this piece I just brought, <coughs> I haven't put this in book form, but it, it, it has to do with, um, I wrote it on the solstice. It's called Blind Man Swinging. And I just talked about the solstice and I literally recorded what happened to me that day. And on that day, I left my house in a hurry and saw a blind man. I didn't think it was a blind man. He was just a man with a cane and a dog who was getting attacked by other dogs. And he was swinging his cane around to defend himself and and he scared the dogs away and then i realized as i drove by, drove by he had these heavy dark glasses on and he was blind and then my whole day was about that later on i met a a guy at the hardware store who was also blind so it just it's a sample of the way i like to write um here's a here's just a bit about mid-afternoon gloom begins draining the sky Dark cloud drizzle starts peltering. I find myself standing in the parking lot of the Pukalani hardware store talking with a guy named Bob. Um, suddenly a woman's voice blasts at us from behind. Excuse me, I don't want to interrupt, she interrupts. I turn, a beefy old howly gal and a wrinkled moo moo shifts, shuffles toward us in house slippers waving her arms. Her gray hair seems to have exploded on her head. Pinched rimmed glasses teeter as if glued onto the tip of her nose, and her plastic necklace includes a medical alert pendant. We can't get home, she cries. My husband and me, we had a taxi, but the taxi driver just drove away and left us. Where do you live? 
say Bob and I in unison. I don't know, she shrieks. We just moved there. I don't remember the name of the street or where it is, but we have to get there before dark. My husband is blind. Where's your husband? I ask. He's still in the hardware store. We need help. So I went in and found this guy who was blind and wasn't wearing glasses and used to sing with Don Ho. And I thought, after I got home, I thought, well, this is kind of an interesting story. He ends up, we end up together kind of improvising a soft shoe shuffle and singing, uh, uh, yeah, what's the, what's the song? Uh, there'll be pennies from heaven. Pennies from heaven. For you and me. Anyway, and I just thought that's such a local event and tied to a, you know, a celestial uh, a, a time. And uh, I don't know. And I and then I got to publish that because no one was telling me it was silly to write about that sort of thing. That wonderful. We have things like that that happen in these islands. And 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 it, it just yeah. depends on how you look at things, right? So thank you for that. Talk about your other books. You also have. I read False Confessions. That's one. Um, That's I had yeah, When that came out, I got the this award. award. Yeah. Pardon. I, when that came out, I was I was given the uh, the Elliot Cades Award. It was a good moment for me. Yeah. Uh, the other one was, came, it was a book I the first book I did with these columns is called uh, Four Wheels Five Corners. Yeah. Uh, I have written other things. Uh, I've written everything, uh, Elaine. I mean, I'm a writer. That's how I feel about it. And <laughs> and I live in Hawaii. That means I'll write all kinds of things for anybody. And I'm really proud of. Uh, writing uh, press kits for very successful multi-million dollar yeah. fundraising campaigns too, um, and I teach. So I'm, I'm. I mean, people get this glorified sense that writers are uh, somehow on another sphere. Uh, I'm, I'm just a guy in the community trying to use what skills I have here. Yeah. Uh, but I have written a novel because I just want to say. I have written several novels, uh, but they're not in print. Um, this uh, COVID situation has really knocked out a lot of my purchase and my places for yes. to, to to publish my work on any s scale. But do you find so you're I, more productive with COVID having happened and being um, sheltered in place? Like well, I have. I, I, I wrote a novel. I, I I, I've right. written I've written two books that are available. Uh, and actually, I have three books available uh, for any publisher who will find me. And I keep <laughs> sending th these things out, and they think, "Oh, here's a white guy in Hawaii. Tech with him. He's he's not. Anyway, never mind." Uh, what about your What about your ingenious life of Melbourne Smith, one man's revival of historic sailing vessels? Oh Something yeah, that like was that was a marvelous project. I did an article for Hanahoe Magazine on a fellow named Woodson Woods who lives in Kamuela on Big Island. And he had a, sa a soaring club, uh, these magnificent sailplanes, uh, he and his buddies, and they would go up, uh, get towed up to the top of Mount Akea, and then uh, uh, then soar from that point on. He took me up and we hit it off. He, he was a sailor and a, a sort of an uh, all around hero kind of fellow. And he had commissioned this man, Melbourne Smith, to design and build a replica of a War of 1812 uh, vessel. And it's sailing on the East Coast now. It's called the, the, the Lynx. And Woody yeah. said, I want to honor Melbourne Smith, who is an ingenious uh, antique boat replicator. And so Woody sent me to Florida for 10 days and I hung out with Melbourne and wrote this book and Woody published it and it's on the links. I wish it was uh, more available. Uh, Woody has and Melbourne are both gone now. So it was just a magic moment. It's a beautiful book. If anybody wants that, especially as a gift for, <laughs> I don't mean to be plugging anything. A good, <laughs> so right good, good, good gift for anyone who loves boats. And I have cartons of them if they just want to get in touch with me. They're not available on Amazon at this time. I, I think there's one on there that's priced at $1,000 or something, the way people are 
Well, I'm thinking of so many writers that I know that have stacks of their books, you know, because, you know, for a while there, we were doing all kinds of um, signings and things like that. And we had to have yeah. them on hand. And, and then COVID just shut it down. Yeah, it really yeah. did. Um, now you have, um, I want to talk a little bit about your magazines, but you have some new books coming out that I think you should let us know about because they look very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I just finished the best thing I've ever written, um, well, just six months ago, um, a novel based on the life of Kalakaua. Um, and it is, uh, it's fun to talk about that, but it's called Last King of the World. And then I did, I finished a project about vocabulary. I'm an English teacher, but I wrote a that. bunch is that, of, is that a nonfiction on uh, Kalakaua? It is uh, what we call magic realism. It's not a, an accurate history. It is taking the context of the shift in Hawaii from um, the beginning of outside contact to what happened in Kalakaua's time. Okay. Uh, uh, there's more to say about it, but. Okay. All right. So a body of words. You want to talk body, about body of words is a collection that I started a long time ago of uh, taking uh, the words we use for the body, starting with the feet, going all the way up to the top of the head, and talking about how those words, it's, it's an etymology, uh, fun etymology piece about the history of words. Can you I'm give us an example? Uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, sure. Talking about standing and all the words that have to do with standing that are so essential to our self-concept. But the whole notion of uh, being an animal that stands up while others are uh, four-legged or flying away, uh, it's the uh, unique, uh, scary thing about human beings, and it's our pride, right? So do you understand that? Um, uh, substantial, and, uh, and a lot of terms about uh, Straightness and and correctness come from the fact that we honor our upright stance. It's Last just a, man standing came to my mind. Uh, yeah, and so it's it's just fun fun way to teach vocabulary. Basically, yes. uh, that's what I'm envisioning. Yes. Uh, and I'm working on a novel now called uh, Slocum. That started as one of my columns, and it's about a Howley guy who lives in contemporary Kihei and gets transported in time back to pre-contact Hawaii in the same spot. And uh, he gets a lesson. And, uh, and I, I'm gonna get him back to okay. uh, confront his previous reality. Anyway, it's just a book fun. that you had to do a lot of research on? I mean, Kalakaua would have been, but um, the yeah. Slocum one, is this something that you would have had to do a lot of research on? To I am doing that? research on it too. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Um, and you have, I, don't, I don't mean to be a scholar in the sense of academic in this regard, yeah. but I have paid attention for quite a long time, my life, and uh, I think I have a pretty good sense of what that would be like without claiming to be um, someone. I especially don't want to claim to be Hawaiian or know what Hawaiians know yeah. about their own culture. Yeah. And then you have Living with Volcanoes coming up. Is that correct? That's um, some short. Well, that well, I decided that since COVID is sort of uh, the publisher publications have gone dark, I decided I should take my best pieces over all this time, and I I isolated forty eight or fifty or so, and they're all good, and you know they they showed up in publications that maybe a few people read, and then they're gone. That's not yeah. fair. So I thought I'd put them together into a volume. Well, that's, that's interesting because we have a question here in the chat room that says, I remember you well from your column in the Maui News. It's been a while. Would you consider a comeback? This might be the answer to this person's prayers, huh? A comeback? Yeah. I would like to find a place to keep writing publicly for my community. There, That's where my heart is. Yes. You know, I'd, I'd like to make more and be wider known. but. Uh, but I, 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 I need, I, sorry, I need to correct. I would never wrote for the Maui News. I've, I've written press releases and seen them get printed with somebody else's name on them, printed verbatim. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I, my work has Maybe been was, uh, in other the Say it again? Maybe it was in one of the magazines. 
like Hanaho or something? Well, um, you, I've written a lot in Hanaho. Yeah, Hanaho. And they've given me some of the best assignments and the, my best big pieces have been in there or Spirit of Aloha when we had Aloha Airlines. Uh, Haleakala Times I did a lot with and uh, other uh, publications like that. No, One no, no. that just folded was called On Maui which was a spin-off from Maui Arts and Cultural Centers. Uh, well, Paul, we're almost out of time. Uh, I want to know, well, first off, I want to put your website up because there's a whole lot of information there, www.paulwoodwriter.com. Please be sure to visit your his website. Are you on any social pages, Facebook, Twitter, or other social media? I don't, I'm not doing that stuff. Not doing that stuff. Um, well, can you tell me what's currently on your bedside table that you're reading? Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's see. I just, uh, I have uh, a Mama's Last Hug nice. by this uh, Belgian uh, primatologist. What is his name? It slips me. Uh, I don't know. Right um, but it's a, it's a recent bestseller. And his whole premise is that animals have emotions and emotions uh, are part of our intelligence, an essential part of our intelligence. And I happen to really believe that and try to teach that too. I read a couple of novels that are on that subject. In closing, I want to thank yes. you for visiting with me, spending some time with us. I can't thank you enough. I want to thank our underwriters, our technicians, our Jay Fidel, our producer, what can I say? And I want to invite you all back in two weeks with my friend, Rita. Forsyth. I don't know who her guest is, but I'm, I promise you it'll be great fun. And Jay Fidel has a few more new shows coming up that you'll want to stay tuned to the site to find out what they are. I'm very excited for him. I'm very excited for Think Tech. If you can donate, please do. We operate that way. And that's the only way we can keep uh, coming to you. And I want to thank the viewers too. Mahalo and aloha. Paul, thanks again. Thank you, Elaine. It's been an honor. I want to have coffee with yeah. you. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.